security as the enemy of the Christians. He said, I need to first know our, we must know our enemy. I would say that therefore you're not our enemy because at least we have sides divided, we can start a dialogue. Correct. Correct. I'd like to address the matter of which you said you cited Jesus' genealogy as being very fraudulent and as being the son of a bastard genealogy. I think this proves a philosophical and theological point which Christianity is trying to make, namely that we are not perfect, we are sinful. That's the word that we constantly use in Christianity, the fact that we are in a sense bastards, all of us, our entire race by now being a human race. Ishmael himself was born of two people who were not married to each other. Therefore, we are bastards. Yes, go ahead, go ahead. Therefore, we find the recurring theme of sin, of human righteousness and impropriety throughout the history of the Bible. I would like to ask you to address the point. In Christianity, since we know that we accept the fact that we are all sinners, we are all incapable of finding our own salvation, I'd like you to address the point of how can a Muslim find personal salvation? Because we know, even the woman who was caught in adultery, she was not the only guilty person in that group. Every man who was standing there to condemn her could be told out. They didn't want to stand and throw a stone at her because they, beginning with the eldest, even to the last, knew they were all sinners. Therefore, I would just like to say that I think that in Christianity, we identify the need for a personal savior. And do you feel that that's the case also in Islam? I think, Mr. Chairman, my daughter there, you know, has raised so many issues, you know, in a brief, very few minutes. I don't know whether I'll be able to do justice to them all. But talking about opponents or enemies, you see, you can take this word in the sense that the Christian is using it. He is calling us heathens. If you read the books written by your own people, you say, how lost are the heathen? You know, heathen mean Kappas. And who are they? All that are not Christians are heathens. Kappas, we, unbelievers. I know that you wouldn't consider us unbelievers, but this is what your people say. My friend, Jimmy Swaggart, you know, I'm listening to his talk on the video, and he says, uh, he says, I love you all. All. But, he says, if you do not accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, as your God and Lord, you are not my brother. Then what am I? He said, you are not my brother. He repeats. So I said, look, these are rhetorics. These are rhetorics. You can also pass my statements also as a rhetoric. But coming to the main point, you see, about every being bo everybody born in sin, I said, this is the Christian concept. We do not believe so. And the Bible doesn't teach so. You see, in the book of Luke, first chapter, Elizabeth and her husband, you read there twice, Elizabeth, it says, was sinless. And her husband, Zechariah, was sinless. Jesus speaks about Abel. Is it from righteous Abel to Zechariah? You kill the prophets. Who? The Jews. He, did he say righteous? Did he say righteous? Is in your book. If he says righteous, that means he was what was speaking with a tongue in his cheek. He was bluffing the people. If he said righteous, then they were said righteous. So you say everybody is a sinner. I said, look, why should you, you know, label everybody with the same brush? Paint everybody with the same brush. You have no right to do that. And God Almighty tells us in the Bible, in the book of Ecclesiastes, He says, He the Lord had made man upright, but He had sought out many inventions. These are all your concoctions, your creation. He didn't make you so. If He created as a sinner, 
then what right has he to expect us to get up and walk straight? If I'm born a sinner, I'm weighted down with the lodestone of sin, and he wants expects me to wait, walk straight. I say he's unjust. He's unjust. The God who ex loads me up, you load your little child and say, come on, straight up, straighten up. You got a, a soldier's haversack on his back. You know, you're a four-year-old, a five-year-old, and the poor fellow is almost, you know, uh, meeting the ground. And you say, why don't you stand up straight and walk? He says, you are unjust. We say, you are a lunatic. God Almighty, if he does the same thing to us, he is also going to describe him as a lunatic. You see, this idea of sin inherited, this is Christianity. You talk about the original sin, the sin came into the world. But the Bible doesn't say that. In the book of Ezekiel, God says, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Have you heard that before? Yes. Every Christian preacher, lecturer, evangelist quotes this. And he puts a full stop. He puts a full stop in a verse which has no full stop. So where is supposed to be a comma or a semicolon, the Christian puts a full stop. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Then he takes you out from there into Corinthians, Philippians, Galatians, and he says, everyone has sinned. So everyone dies unless somebody comes along and redeems him of that curse. I said, look, listen, read it further. He says, the son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. Father Adam, he made a mistake. Mother Eve made a mistake. And they paid more than the full price. If somebody goes and plucks some fruits in your garden, they were told not to. What do you do? You chase the child out. You might give it a spanking. But now you follow that child up, his children and his children, his grand, great grandchildren for eternity. <laughs> Can you imagine a God like that? A Shylock, worse than a Shylock? Adam and Eve, they sinned. So God kicks them out of the garden. I'm asking, is that not punishment enough? Then he curses them. That you woman, you must bear children in pain and suffering, labor, and for, for, for what you have done. And man, you must sweat for your bread. And you are all sweating and you are all laboring. As a result of what Adam and Eve did. Is, not, is that not enough? No, not for this Shiloh of a God that you convey to us. He goes on now and said, every human kind on earth must go to hell. At the beginning of 1986, we were 4.8 billion human beings on earth. And everyone goes to hell, says the Christian. For what? For the original sin. Unless you believe in Christ. I'm asking, did Eve ask you, my sister, before eating the apple? Did she? No. Did Adam ask you before eating the apple? No. Then I said, how can God hold you responsible? Is he a lunatic? This God of ours, is he a lunatic? He's going to hold me responsible for what Adam and Eve did when I was not consulted. I don't know if you were consulted by Eve, then you have a right to be cursed. <laughs> what kind of a God is this? So he says, says the, uh, and the father shall not bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. Whatever good thing the good man does, he gets his reward. And the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. But if the wicked will turn from all the sins that he has committed and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die. 